The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I love how our gospel today is filled with echoes of other resurrection stories. The story of Emmaus, where Jesus unpacks the scriptures for the disciples, and they finally recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Last Sunday's reading, where Jesus says three times, peace be with you. Shalom Aleichem. And he lets them see and touch the wounds in his hands and his side. Recently, I heard a contemporary Christian worship song by a, a group called Casting Crowns. And the lyrics say, the only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken and all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven, yeah, are on the hands that hold you now. It's a wonderful song, and though its sentiments are worthy, I do wonder about our wounds and heaven. If the risen Jesus still carries his open wounds, and if, as St. Paul says, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, will we not all carry our wounds? To be sure, healed, elevated, restored, made redemptive by his wounds. Is it not our very vulnerability, brokenness, our wounded flesh that makes a way for the victory of Christ in the midst of our own wounds and the whole of wounded humanity. 
Blessed are the pure, poor in spirit, says the first beatitude. Thomas weeps in our gospel today and cries out, well, in our gospel last week, actually. Thomas weeps and cries out, my Lord and my God, when he touched the wounded Christ. Because the wounds of Christ touched his wounded, doubting heart. For the same reason that our contemporaries will cry out when we are not afraid to uncover our wounds that Christ has healed, our wounds that in imitation of him can also pour forth water and blood from the side of our crucified humanity. Jesus isn't the only human to be crucified. Countless are the victims of history, then and now. Just the week before Jesus' execution, Pontius Pilate had crucified 5,000 zealots on the walls of Jerusalem. In our own more recent history, we have the horrors and of the trenches of the First World War, the Holocaust of the Second World War, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Rwanda, Sudan, Ukraine, Gaza. The cross of Christ is the ultimate act of solidarity with all the victims of history. In the incarnation and the cross, God embraces all the vulnerable woundedness of our humanity right down to the bottom and turns it into glory if we let him. In our gospel today, Jesus takes us even further into the mystery of his resurrection, wounds and all. First of all, he asks them for something to eat and then he eats it in their presence. He is not being a hungry ghost, but real flesh and real blood, just like he is for us in the Eucharist. Just like on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is the great commentator, the great exegete of the meaning of the Old or the First Testament. His living commentary on the presence of the word made flesh in the first testament in the torah the law of moses the prophets and the psalms the whole of the old testament the whole of the first testament is filled with with texts that hold the echo or act as symbols or types of what happens later in the life of Jesus and in the new covenant. From the offspring of the woman who will crush the head of the serpent in the book of Genesis, to the paschal lamb of the Exodus, to the suffering servant of Isaiah, to my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was Jesus echoes from the cross, but which is also the first line of a psalm, from a messianic psalm. Christ, the messianic hope, is present, prefigured, anticipated throughout the First Testament, as well as the New. The systematic study of these matters is called typology. So no more examples, the old Adam, and the new Adam, the old Eve, and the new Eve, Mary, the Tower of Babel and its reversal on the day of Pentecost, the flood in the Red Sea as a symbol of baptism, the Passover meal and the manna in the desert, and the Eucharist, the way Christ instantiates and fulfills the message of the prophets, his Davidic ancestry, where they called him son of David, Jesus is the word of God in the flesh. The first testament is the word of God made ink. 
There is a radical continuity between the First Testament and the New Testament. Jesus is the word spoken out of the midst of Israel, the people who wrestle with God. In baptism, we are plunged into his death and resurrection, empowered by the Holy Spirit to live a transformed life by the sacrament of confirmation, restored often by the sacrament of reconciliation and fed by the Eucharist. Jesus, the body of Christ, broken for us, and us, the body of Christ, broken for each other and for all who are hungry and thirsty for the bread of life and for living water. <laughs>